People think punk rock is a form of music. It wasn't. You know, it became known as that you have to play four chords and shout. But no, originally punk rock was a, a late 70s thing which, which was a kind of cultural revolution. It wasn't only music, it was art and poetry and, and all these things. And it reconfirmed the, the principle that art is the transmission of spirit. That's what it's all about. It doesn't really matter about the details of what you're doing. It matters about the spirit you do it with. It's Justin Solomon from New Model Army and you are watching Talking Records. I was always under the impression that uh, New Model Army is a band that is uh, exactly where it uh, wants to be in terms of uh, popularity, for example. Although for some fans uh, you are still considered an underrated band. How do you see the place that your band have in the music scene today? It's interesting, when you start playing, if I think back you know, to what we started, you, when you're a band, you talk about making it, when we make it. And what you mean is making a living from it, not having to have a day job. Um, and we crossed this bridge in 1984 or something, and after that, you sort of, you can be sort of popular or not popular or, but we make a living from it. So we do what we want in the way we want when we want, and we do the music we want, and we've never really had to compromise. <clears throat> and sometimes it seems, you know, sometimes it seems we're quite a big band, and sometimes we're a little band, and, and people's, People's view of us, uh, we don't really worry about what people th other people think. You know, I think I've always made the same joke that last time I looked in my fridge there was food in it. Yeah, you want to be successful, you want everybody to love you, um, you want your music to reach millions of people, but it's not the most important thing. The success or money were never the driving factors. They've always existed, you know, so, you know, people are around. ambition, it's a sort of natural human thing. But here we are after 42 years doing what we like and what we love in the way we think is the right way to do it, so. With the ultimate reward being the total freedom, creative Yeah, freedom. I don't, th I can't think of another band that have got this kind of total creative freedom and that, that don't, I mean on this tour we have been playing a lot of old material because in a way it's delayed tour from 2020 which was the anniversary blah 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 blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> but generally there's no songs that we think we have to play. From 1975 from the last year's solo album Surrounded you sing uh, the golden dream faded away, the pictures uh, browned and blurred. Are you a sentimental person? Uh, is it important for you to preserve memories? No, I'm not a sentimental person and I'm not um, nostalgic. But I think like lots of people during lockdown, there was lots of time to think. And there was not much happening in anyone's lives, sort of, you know, day-to-day -day stuff. So you do, it was, making that record was a moment, uh, looking back a little bit and I, when I was 19, I hitchhiked around North America for four months, three, four months. Canada, Mexico, just hitchhiking around and around, just not going anywhere in particular, having all sorts of adventures, meeting all sorts of people. And it was a really interesting time to be in America because it was after the end of the Vietnam War and everything, and, and after the kind of, the, the wild end of the 60s with the civil rights movement, the assassinations of 
uh, you know, the Kennedys and then Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. And America was kind of shell-shocked. It was a bit like everybody just wanted to be quiet. And I was, during lockdown, I was just, I had this memory of, of that trip. All the songs and the music from the mid-70s in America were kind of bleached out. All those movies were all kind of sepia. They got a strange atmosphere, and I just tried to make a song with that atmosphere. On uh, Never Arriving, you said, the safest place I know is here, between departing and arriving, but never arriving. Uh, why is it so appealing about being this uh, constant work in progress, about uh, the journey being more important than, uh, it, than the destination? It's how I've always felt. My mother used to say that when I was little, I lived in the countryside, so every every journey began with a car, you know, a car. And if she was going anywhere to the shops or so, I would get in the car because I just wanted to go. My favourite feeling is 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 packing a bag and there's a car or a bus or something waiting downstairs. We're going, we're going. I never like arriving. I'm always slightly disappointed by arriving. You know. <laughs> I like the journey, um, so yeah. Do you think there will be a moment in your life when you will just uh, you will just sit down and say, "Okay, I am fulfilled. This is it." No, I'm sure there won't be. A, there, there are there are little moments like that. To be honest, this tour has been very hard, quite long, um, very few days off, a lot of miles, a lot of shows. Um, and tomorrow, we'll, well, we'll be driving tomorrow. But uh, on, on Monday, I will sit on the sofa and do nothing and I'll go, <sighs> and I'll be like that for two or three days and then I'll go, uh, hmm, hmm, itchy now, you know, I want to do something. I mean, we're not really planning to tour very much at the beginning of next year because we, uh, last year really, we wrote, at the beginning of this year, we wrote quite a lot of songs for the next New Model Army album but we haven't had a chance to get down to it. You know, the, the, a lot of the songs are written, a lot of riffs and rhythms and lyrics and, you know, it's written. Um, so we're all kind of looking forward to finally getting on with this album. What have changed about you over all those years as a person and what has stayed the same? Well, of course, all the, you know, the process of getting older, you know, the, the more you know, the more, the, the more, what is it, the more you know, the more you know that you know nothing. I mean, this is, this is true about getting older, but you, you, you've accrued all this knowledge and then you've also realised that actually you know nothing. Yeah, some of those kind of uh, young, young man in a hurry want to prove yourself and, and that reduces, I think. Um, but the never arriving has never gone away. This always looking for the next project, the next project, the next project. Got an idea, next project, got an idea, next project. And um, when I say me, but actually it's not just me, it's everybody in the band. And we still, people make the mistake because I'm the original member. I was the original member by 1985, obviously the only one. But the, the you know, it, it's sort of me but it's really not me. We, we're really like a band band. Ideas come from everybody. And I've never really believed in democracy and bands. You can't easily take a vote on something. I think that it's more that the person that feels the most passionately persuades the others. Even though we're very different people, with very different lives outside of the band, within the band, we kind of agree about how we are, how we should, where we should go. I, wanted, I would like to quote one timeless line from one of the biggest classics. Uh, we are old, we are young, we are in this together. Pandemic was such a time when we, where we were experiencing something collectively, like everyone had a similar experience, we were all in this together. Uh, now we also have the situation with the war in Ukraine, which is also uh, affecting the rest of the world. Uh, do you feel like these uh, tumultuous times that we live in right now will find their way into your lyrics? No, because to start with, I think you're wrong about COVID. I th that everybody, uh, okay, it's something we all went through together. 
but it was a very different experience for different people. If you if you had a nice house in the country and you weren't too worried about money, then lockdown was heaven. If you lived on the 16th floor of a block of flats and you had no money, then lockdown was hell. You know, it was, it was, you know, in some overcrowded apartment. I think it was very different for different people. Um, yes, everybody had this kind of break in their life, but I think it was a very different experience. Um, and the war. What I do think, though, is that that it's. It's a very strange, it's a new experience, I think, for everybody to live in a world where you, you have no idea what the world would look like in two years. Two years from now, could be a lot of different, the world could look really different. And we don't know where it's going. And we're trying to keep our humanity and our feelings and that, etc. But, but that's quite strange. But the only problem is it makes people Frightened, and when people are frightened, they're defensive. Uh, and when people are defensive and paranoid, then that's not very good for us collectively. You know, it's very easy to divide us into little groups. You know, there's against this group, against this group, and then all the flags come back. Uh, scary times. There is a recurring theme in your lyrics with natural landscapes. What is it that uh, draws you into this uh, primal and untouched by human uh, part of our world? I've always been a bit like that. I, and we all are, actually. I mean, interestingly, rock music, most of its roots are quite, and, and the vibe is quite urban. But in New Model Army, we're not. We're quite, we're not really an urban band. There are all these big landscapes, and we all love big landscapes, mountains, sea, desert, you know, these big open landscapes. It's where we, all of us feel good. We're not really uh, city people, even if some of us live in cities. Um, I was born in the country. I do live in a city, but if I live in two cities, one Bradford, one Paris, but uh, I always feel best now in the big open spaces. And Michael is a country boy. Kerry's a small town boy. Dean's a sort of village boy here. Yeah. So we, we, we're not really an urban band. It was interesting when we made um, From Here, you could say to you could say to lots of groups, where would you most like to record an album? And some groups would say, oh, I want to go to New York where it's all happening, or some band might say, you know, we want to go to a Caribbean island where it's kind of warm and lovely. And, and we chose to go to a Norwegian island in, at the end of winter, and um, to be surrounded by snowy mountains and freezing cold Atlantic Ocean. You like to emphasize the influence of the rats. You crossed the paths with uh, such big names like uh, Glyn Jones, uh, David Bowie or John Peel. Uh, what is uh, the importance of having the chance to meet such uh, great personalities along the way of your journey? I think it's very useful um, to meet some, some kinds of people. I think the first person that had this massive influence on, on me with Glyn Johns. Um, when we did the Ghost of Cain with Glyn Johns, um, you know, he, he produced like, everybody, everybody, everybody. And he was, he was very good at understanding, he was like a teacher, he knew who needed a stick and who needed a carrot. So uh, he, he decided that I needed a stick a lot of the time, and he was right. But he was basically, I, at this time I was angry, in a hurry, wanted to be the, the hardest, the toughest, most political band, you know. And he was going, okay, but 
what about the music? You know, and he... I remember the first night we ever recorded with Ben Johnson. And we played something. And we were very excited. We thought, yeah, we're going to sound like The Who. It's going to be great. It was 1986, so it was the time of the producer. The producer makes everything happen. And we, we, we were recording with Ben Johnson. We are going to sound amazing. So we recorded something. And then he, we went back into the room. And we played it back. And then my heart fell. We got to the end. And, uh, and he said, what do you think? Because he was like a school teacher. And I said, it doesn't sound very good, Clint. And he said, no, it doesn't. <laughs> and I went, can you, can you make it sound better? And he went, me make it sound better. I'm recording it. This is what you sound like. If you want it to sound better, you better play better. You know, and it was like, whoa, <laughs> so, okay, now, now this is where, you know, it, 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 it matters, the music matters, I think, and it was, it, it's a half and half album, the Glenn uh, Johnson one, Ghost of Pain, some of it's really good, where he got his way, it's really good, where, where we, where I got my way, which I did sometimes, um, it's not so good, and, uh, and then we took all the lessons from that, and we made Thunder Constellation, which was super successful, and, and it's a very good record, and very musical. And, uh, so that was a really important key meeting. Thank you for watching my interview with Justin Sullivan from New Model Army. Next to my head you will find links to other videos on my channel and I will see you next time.